Hello and welcome grade 11 accounting students. In today's lesson, we are going to revise on asset disposal as well as the tangible asset note. So let's get started. Right, so the question that I've chosen for today's lesson will involve the purchasing of additional tangible assets as well as an asset disposal or the selling of a particular asset. Now remember guys that whenever you come across asset disposal, very very important that you are able to identify when was the asset sold, was it at the beginning of the year, was it at the end of the year, or did this happen during the year? Because obviously the, the manner in which you treat the disposal depends on the time the asset was sold. So I want you guys to take that into account when we complete this question. So as usual, I'm gonna ask you all to work with me. Make sure you've got your calculator in front of you. Make sure you've got pen, paper, and obviously we need to do this together. So let's get started. Right, so the information that's given to us, let's just read through this. The information below, let's get a pen. Right, so the information below was extracted from the accounting records of Trendy Fashions. Their financial year ends annually on the 30th of June. Right, so immediately I'm going to draw a timeline so I get a feel for the year end or the financial year that I'm working for. So if the financial year ends on the 30th of June, it obviously starts on the 1st of July. Okay, so that's more or less my financial year. Right, what's required from us? So we are required to use the information below to complete the following general ledger accounts for the year ended 1st of July 2003 to the 30th of June 2004. So the year that I'm working for begins in 2003 and ends on the 30th of June 2004. Okay, so I'm going to be completing some general ledger accounts, which accounts accumulated depreciation on vehicles as well as asset disposal. Right, and then the next part to the question, complete the tangible asset note. Now at this stage, you guys, especially in grade 11, you should be aware that you do not have to start with the general ledger. You may prefer to start with the tangible asset note, and as you are completing the tangible asset note, you then complete the two general ledger accounts. So that's the approach that I'm going to use. Okay, all right, so let's go through our information that's given. I'm not gonna read through this in detail because we'll obviously look at this in more detail as we're completing the answer booklet. Right, so I've got information, balance on the 30th of June, 2004. So this is obviously my balance at the end of the year. So what, what have they given me? They've given me a balance for vehicles, land and buildings, and then accumulated depreciation on vehicles, 1st of July, which is always at the beginning of the year because you need to still provide for depreciation, 55,000. Right, then I'm given various transactions and I'm going to quickly scan through these transactions, look for some key words. So the first transaction deals with a Mazda. So immediately this transaction deals with vehicles. The next transaction purchased a new vehicle. Okay, so also deals with vehicles. The third transaction on the 30th of June, a check was issued to build it contractors. This was for an additional storeroom. So this obviously deals with land and buildings. And then finally, the last bit of information deals with vehicles. Okay, it helps when you can identify which tangible asset each transaction is referring to. Okay, right, so let's get started. 
So I'm going to start with my tangible asset note. And the first bit of information that I want to complete is everything in terms of land and buildings. Okay, so remember guys, your tangible asset note is simply your general ledger in a different format. And I've explained this previously. Right, what do I mean by general ledger in a different format? So obviously we will start with balances at the beginning of the year. So what's my cost? What's my accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the financial year? That will then give me my carrying value at the beginning of the year. Okay. Then I move on to movements. So movement simply refers to what happened during the year. How did these balances change? Okay, so they could have been an addition at cost, they could have been a disposal, and obviously at the end of the year there is depreciation. So that refers to my movements, and this helps me calculate my carrying value at the end of the year. So what is my cost after movements at the end of the year? What is my accumulated depreciation again after movements at the end of the year. Okay, so beginning of the year, during the year, end of the year. Okay, with me. Right, so we're going to start off with land and buildings. So let's go back to our information. Right, and on our information sheet, so we've got land and buildings at the end of the year, 500,000. And I've got additional information. So let's read through this now in detail. On the 30th of June 2004, which is obviously at the end of the year, a check was issued to build it contractors for 55,000. This was for an additional storeroom constructed. The above amount also included repairs to the window frames for an amount of 2,000 Rand. No entries have been made. So we're going to start off with the very last sentence. No entries have been made. So what does this mean? This means that this amount of 500,000 does not include the new transaction. So this amount, even though it says on the 30th of June, this amount represents the beginning of the year because no entries were made for this additional storeroom that was constructed. So let's now go to our answer sheet. So at the beginning of the year, my land and buildings, okay, the cost at the beginning of the year was an amount of 500,000. Now remember land and buildings, there's obviously no accumulated depreciation. So your carrying value at the beginning of the year is also 500,000. Right, now let's get to movements. So what happened during the year? There was obviously an addition, an addition where we constructed a new storeroom and that is obviously going to increase the value of our land and buildings. So let's go back to the transaction. Let's look at the actual addition. So we built a new storeroom for 55,000. However, however, this amount included repairs to the window for 2000 okay now remember guys very very important that you are able to distinguish an asset from an expense okay you guys with me the total cost that we paid build it contractors the total cost was 55000 but remember, included in that 55,000 was the cost for building the additional storeroom. So that's your asset. But for repairing the window frames, that would be regarded as an expense. So I just want to write that down for you. Okay, the total that we paid, so the total payment made, 55,000. Why did we pay them 55,000? So we constructed a storeroom. So a new storeroom, which is classified as an asset, but we also did some repairs to the window frames and the repairs amounted to 2,000 Rand, which means the construction of the storeroom was 
55,000 minus the 2,000, which is 53,000. Okay, and remember, tangible asset note is asking you how much did the value of your asset increase by? It increases by the new storeroom only, 53,000, not the repairs. Okay, that's an expense. Obviously, because it's an expense, it belongs in the income statement, not as part of the balance sheet. Okay, so 53,000, let's enter that amount as our addition. Okay, so addition, 53,000. Okay, right, so my carrying value at the end of the year, so remember, I read through the information, there's no disposal, there's obviously no depreciation. So at the end of the year, my carrying value, it was 500,000 at the beginning of the year, plus 53,000 to give me 553,000. So that is my carrying value at the end of the year. Cost at the end of the year is also 553,000, and obviously there is no accumulated depreciation. Okay, so straightforward. Obviously, you had to remember what's an, in, what's an expense versus what's an asset, but not difficult. Okay, right. Now, let's move on to the more challenging asset, which is vehicles. Right, so remember, guys, I've got two ledger accounts to complete as well. So as I'm completing my tangible asset note, I will then complete the ledger account. So let's go back to the information that was given to us. Okay, so in terms of vehicles, I've got my balance on the 30th of June, 240,000, but at the stage, because I haven't read the adjustments, I'm not sure whether this balance is at the beginning of the year or it's at the end of the year. It all depends on whether the adjustments were taken into account or not. So remember, even though it says the 30th of June, you've got to look at the additional information. Right, accumulated depreciation on vehicles, however, this one is straightforward because this is at the beginning of the year. You haven't written off depreciation as yet. So I can take through the 55,000 to my answer sheet even before reading through my additional information. Right, so if I go to my answer sheet, okay, let's fill that in. 55,000 is my accumulated depreciation, and this must be in brackets. Right, cost will obviously get to that as we look through the information. Right, so let's start the first transaction. On the 1st of October 2003, you sold a Mazda Bucky for 20,000 Rand cash. So immediately I'm doing, dealing with a disposal. Right, remember what I said at the beginning of the lesson? always take into account the date. When did you sell this asset? So this asset was sold on the 1st of October 2003. Right, so immediately you've sold the asset during the financial year. Okay, right, 20,000 was cash. The Bucky was purchased on the 1st of January 2001 for 60,000 Rand. No entry was made for the sale of the above transaction. All right, so immediately, guys, whenever doing an asset disposal account, remember, you need the cost price of the asset. You obviously need the selling price. What did you sell the asset at? As well as your accumulated depreciation on the asset that is being sold. And without these three amounts, you obviously cannot complete your asset disposal. So the first step would be to calculate these amounts if the amounts are not given. All right, so from the information that I've just read, let's quickly look at the 20,000. The 20,000 sold a Mazda Bucky. So immediately, that 20,000 is your selling price. I've got my selling price. Right, how much did we buy this Bucky for? What did it cost the business? So the Bucky was purchased on the 1st of January 2001 for 60,000. So that 60,000 would be my cost price. Okay, you guys with me? 
Right, so cost price is given. Right, then they tell me no entry was made for the sale of the above asset. Immediately, can you see they are not giving me my accumulated depreciation? Right, now what does this mean? This means that before I even start with my asset disposal ledger account, I've got to first calculate my accumulated depreciation. How am I going to go about doing this? I'm going to use the date when the asset was purchased, the 1st of Jan 2001. Okay, so I know you guys are probably thinking, oh my God, what a long, difficult calculation. It actually isn't. But I think let's just give you some time to just look through this information. So let's take a quick break. And when you guys come back, then we will calculate accumulated depreciation and then complete the asset disposal ledger account. All right, so I'll see you guys straight after this break. Welcome back, guys. Right, let's tackle this asset disposal. So what I've done to make our lives a bit easier, I've written down the information from that transaction, so it's nothing new. So let me just show you guys what I've done. The cost price, 60000 Remember, this amount was given to us. The selling price, what we're selling the asset for, 20000 Accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the financial year, is not given to us for this particular asset, but we are given the date the asset was purchased. So it was purchased on the 1st of January, 2001. So remember guys, that in order for you to complete an asset disposal, you obviously need these three amounts, all three amounts. So our first step is, let's calculate what is our accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the financial year. Now, I don't want you guys to get confused when I say beginning of this financial year. Remember, I still need to update my accumulated depreciation, but I'm not doing that at this point. Okay, I want to be very clear about this. I am not updating my accumulated depreciation. All I'm doing is calculating at the beginning of this year, what was my accumulated depreciation? Okay, right, now that we have that out of the way, so let's, let's calculate accumulated depreciation. Right, so I'm going to go back to the 1st of January 2001 when this asset was purchased. Now remember, we're obviously going back a couple of years. So the financial year doesn't change. 1st of July, 30th of June, Okay, and this would end in 2001. So we bought the asset on the 1st of Jan, 2001. So in our first financial year, we've only used the asset for six months. So from the 1st of January until the end of June, I've used this particular Bucky only for six months. So when I depreciate this asset, 60,000 is my cost. Okay, so 60,000, right? Depreciation is provided at 10% per annum on the diminishing balance method. So the first year, it doesn't matter whether it's cost or diminishing. So the rate is 10%. So I've got my amount, rate, and obviously I need my time. So let's multiply that by six. Let's correct that. Okay, multiply that by the rate is 10% times the time would be 6 over 12 because I've only owned the asset for 6 months. All right, so for the first financial year, when I write off depreciation, let's get the calculator out. Okay, so I'm taking my cost, 60,000 times 10%. Okay, and I'm going to divide that by 2 because it's 6 over 12. So for the first year, I'm writing off 3,000. Okay, you guys with me? Right, let's now move on to the next financial year. The second financial year, obviously this financial year would end. So I just want to quickly draw it up. Let's just extend the page because this calculation is important. So my second financial year, again, would start on the 1st of July, but this time it would be 
2001 and would end on the 30th of June 2002. So for the second financial year, I've now owned the asset for the entire year. So when I depreciate this asset, remember it's on diminishing balance method, so I have to take my cost minus what I've written off, so minus the 3,000, okay, and then multiply this by 10%, and it's for the entire year, 12 over 12, which obviously cancels out. Right, so for my second financial year, I'm now writing off, okay, cost 60 minus 3,000, so that gives me my book value, Okay, times that by 10%, and that gives us 5,700. Okay, right, now we come to our third financial year. Okay, let's just quickly check the current financial year, remember, starts on the 1st of July 2003, so I've got one more year to look at. Okay, so my next financial year would start on the 1st of July, 2002 and end on the 30th of June 2003. Okay, so for my third financial year, for the third financial year, let's look at what I've got. So again, I've obviously owned the asset for the entire year. So once again, I will take my amount, 60,000, minus the depreciation I've written off in total, okay, so remember I first wrote off 3,000 plus 5,700, so in total I've written off 8,700, okay, and again you're going to obviously multiply this by 10% for 12 months, so 12 over 12, which cancels out, and then in the third financial year I've written off Okay, 60,000 minus 8,700, and that gives me 51,300, times that by 10%. So in my third financial year, I'm writing off 5,130, okay. Now remember, what am I trying to work out? I'm trying to work out what is my accumulated depreciation at the beginning of July 2003. So I've written off 3,000, then I've written off 5,700, and then at the end of the third year, which is 30th of June 2003, I've written off 5,130. So my accumulated depreciation at the beginning of 2003, because that's what I want, what was my accumulated depreciation on the 1st of July 2003, should be an amount of, so we've got the 5130 plus 5,700 plus, I think it was 3,000, let me just quickly check, plus 3,000, let's pull the calculator out again, so plus 3,000, And in total, I've written off 13,830. So let's write that down. 13,830. Just want to double check that figure, guys. Just make sure I haven't made a mistake. 13,830. Okay. Right. Now that I've got all three amounts, I can now start with my actual asset disposal. So remember, there's various steps for asset disposal. You may do step two and three slightly differently. Obviously, it depends on the way your teacher taught you. But remember, any method would work. So step one, what is my first step? I need to transfer my cost price of 60000 to my asset disposal account. So let's do that. So let's go to the ledger account asset disposal. Okay, and we're now transferring 
on the debit side an amount of 60,000 by means of a general journal entry. And remember, this would have obviously come from the ledger account, which would be vehicles. And this is happening on the 1st of, I'm sure it was October 2003. Okay, so that's your first entry. Right, so let's go back to that information that I recorded. So step one, completed. I transferred my cost price. Right, what is step two? Step two wants me to transfer accumulated depreciation after I update my accumulated depreciation for the time that the asset was used in this financial year. So remember, I've already written off 13,830, but I now need to update this amount. Okay, so that was the step that I was talking about earlier on. What do I mean by update the amount? We've done this already. So updating simply means I've used the asset for this time frame. Let's take another color. Okay, so I've used the asset for this time frame. So I now need to write off additional depreciation. And I need to add that amount to the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year and then transfer this to asset disposal. Okay, you guys with me? Right, so let's do that. I'm going to use the space at the bottom again. Okay, so for my current year, my depreciation would be as follows. Okay, so depreciation for current year. Okay, so once again, I'm going to take my cost, which is 60000 minus the accumulated depreciation in total that I've written off, 13,830. So minus 13,830. And then I'm going to multiply this by the rate, which stays the same at 10%. But for this financial year, I haven't used the asset for the entire year. So I've used the asset from the 1st of July until the 1st of October. So how many months have I used the asset? Let's count together. So I've used it for July, August, September, not October, because I sold the asset on the 1st of October. So I've used the asset for only three months. Let's just check one more time. So July, August, September. So I'm only going to depreciate the asset for three months. So times three over 12. So the additional depreciation that I have to write off, so let's get the calculator out again. Okay, so 60,000 minus 13,000. Okay, and we're going to multiply that by 10%. Okay, and remember, Okay, something doesn't look right here. Let's just do this again. So 60,000 minus 13,830. So that gives us a carrying value, right? Multiply that by 10%. Okay, and it's for 3 over 12. So multiply that by 3, divide it by 12. And we're writing off depreciation of... 1154,25 cents. The instruction, I didn't read through the instruction, but it was round off to the nearest rand. So that's what I'm going to do. So 1154 is my additional depreciation. Right, so let's just add that plus 1154. Okay, you guys with me? Right, so let's now calculate what is our updated accumulated depreciation? So it would be 13,830 plus 1,154, and that gives us 14,984, which we will now transfer to our asset disposal account. So 14,984. So let's do that. Okay, 14,000, 
14,984 and this amount is obviously coming from accumulated depreciation on vehicles. Okay, so remember it's quite a bit to fit in, but you guys, you've got to make sure that you write in the correct contra account. Right, so step two completed. And now that I've done the second step, okay, should have probably did this simultaneously, but accumulated depreciation on vehicle, if we had to complete this account, remember guys, you're obviously going to start off with your balance brought down, okay, the additional depreciation that you've written off on the 1st of October, you would record that 1,154. And then what you've now just transferred to asset disposal. So I'm just doing the contra entry for you. Asset disposal, we transferred a total of 14,984. So let's fill that in, 14,984. 84. Okay, right, second step completed. Let's now look at the third step. The third step requires me to record the selling price of the asset. So remember the asset was sold for 20,000. So I've done, I've recorded my accumulated depreciation. Let's now record the selling price. The asset was sold for cash, 20,000. So straightforward. So the other account affected is obviously bank. Okay, so my bank account, an amount of 20,000. Okay, right, I think before we do the final step where we calculate whether we made a profit or a loss, let's take another break and when you guys come back, we will do that calculation. I'll see you guys straight after this break. Okay guys, let's now calculate whether we made a profit or a loss on the sale of this asset. Right, now remember, when you're calculating whether you made a profit or a loss, you've got to ask yourself by looking at the asset disposal ledger account, what was the worth of this asset? Okay, so by worth, remember, as accounting students, you should know, we're referring to carrying value or book value. So at the point of sale, what was the book value of this asset? What's the, what was the actual worth of the asset? So how do we calculate book value? You obviously will take your cost, what you bought the asset for, minus your accumulated depreciation. So in total, how much of value did this asset lose over the last three years? Okay, cost minus accumulated depreciation. So let's do that. Let's work out what is the book value of this asset. So 60,000 was my cost minus accumulated depreciation 14,984. So the actual worth of this asset, it was worth 45,016. That was the actual worth of the asset. Right, but what did we sell the asset for? We sold the asset for 20,000. Okay, so think about it. It's worth 45,016 Rand, but for some reason we sold it for only 20,000. So obviously the business lost out. The business made a loss. So let's calculate what the loss was. So I'm taking my book value minus the 20,000 and the loss on sale of asset was 25,016. So remember, you're going to debit loss on sale of asset, which is an expense. So let's just draw that up for you. So loss on sale of asset, 25,016, and you are going to credit asset disposal, 25,016, and your contra account will be loss on sale of asset. Okay. Right, what happens next to this account? Okay, so remember the whole purpose of this account is to work out, did I make a profit or did I make a loss, which I've already done. I've worked out I made a loss. So this account should automatically now balance or close off. Okay, so 60,000 
on the debit side. So let me just add up my credit side to see that I'm getting 16,000. So 14,984 plus 20,000 plus the loss of 25,016. Okay, to give you 60,000. Okay, so this ledger account is now completed. Right, now what am I going to do with this information? Now remember guys, asset disposal, there's a lot happening. And this is why accounting is one of those subjects where you've got to think on your feet. You've got to sometimes think about the ledger account, but at the same time, you've got to think about the way this is now going to be recorded or shown in the note. So now that I've completed the ledger account, what will I now take to my note? So let's go to the note. And in terms of the note, remember you've got a section, movements. So what happened during the year? There was a disposal and you've got to record it at carrying value. Carrying value, book value means the same thing. So at the, at the point of sale, what was the worth of this asset? And remember, we've already calculated that. So if we go back to our T account, at the point of sale, this asset was worth 45,016. So how did I get that amount? One more time, I took my cost minus my accumulated depreciation. So that amount, 45,016, is what I will now show as my disposal at carrying value. 45,016, and rem remember, because it's a disposal, it's gonna decrease the amount of assets that you own. So this is obviously a negative amount and it must be indicated by using brackets, okay? Right, what else do I need to now take from this T account, okay? So remember, you will also obviously show the loss on sale of asset. We don't have to do it, it's not required in the question, but because it's a revision, I'm gonna remind you guys we would take this to our income statement, okay? And obviously the 20,000 would affect your, your bank account in your balance sheet. Okay, you guys with me? Right, asset disposal done and dusted. Let's now move on to the next bit of information that was given to us. Okay, so the next bit of information on the 29th of Feb, 2004, so again during the year, you purchased a new vehicle on credit from MM Motors for 80,000. This was correctly recorded. Okay, right, now guys, this is important. This is absolutely important. Right, now what does this mean? Remember you were given balances at the end of the year. However, when it came to vehicles, 240,000, I mentioned at the beginning, that by reading through this bit of information, I'm unable to assess whether this is at the beginning of the year or at the end of the year. And this is despite them telling me these are the balances as at 30th of June. Because remember, my adjustments could have been entered as well as not entered. So in terms of this information that I've just read out, you purchased a new vehicle, okay, on the 29th of Feb for 80,000 and it was correctly recorded, which means this amount already includes the 80,000. So if you've got to now work backwards, remember, you're sitting at 240,000. During the year, you purchased an additional vehicle for 80,000. So what was your balance at the beginning of the year? You're obviously now working backwards, isn't it? All right, so to get that amount, 240,000 minus 80,000. Okay, we can do it without a calculator, but let's just 240 minus 80,000. So at the beginning of the year, my assets had a cost price of 160,000. Now, why do I need this information? I obviously need to disclose this in my tangible asset note. So 160,000, let's start by doing that. So let's record this first. At the beginning of the year, 
my vehicles, the cost was 160000 Now that I have the cost, I can work out my carrying value at the beginning of the year. And then obviously we purchased an additional vehicle, but we're going we're gonna to look at that in more detail after we've just completed this part of the note. Right, so my carrying value at the beginning of the year, let's just fill that in. Now that I've got my cost, so 160000 Okay, minus 55,000, and that gives us 105,000. Okay, right, now that that bit is sorted out, additions at cost. So let's work that out. Right, I know it was 80,000, but there was more information, so I just want to look through the rest of the information before we record this. Okay, so back to the 80,000. This was correctly recorded, we know that. On this day, an alarm system costing 10,000 Rand was installed in the new vehicle by MM Motors. No entry was made for this. Okay, now what does this mean? Remember earlier on when we spoke about land and buildings, we came across repairs to the window frames. Now, is this a similar scenario? I want you guys to think about it for a moment. Is it similar? Okay, we installed an alarm system. So remember, what is the difference between an expense and an asset? An expense would be your maintenance of the actual vehicle, right? Where you make sure that the vehicle is serviced, you make sure that the windows open and they close. That is maintenance, that is an expense. But if you install an alarm system, you are now adding value to your asset. You are increasing the value of the asset. Are you guys with me? So even though I purchased the new asset for 80000 by installing this alarm system for 10000 the worth, the actual worth of this new asset is 90000 Okay. Right, very, very important, guys. Right, so what am I going to do with the 90,000? That 90,000, okay, let's just go back to the note. Okay. Right, so that amount of 90,000 would be my additions at cost, okay. Right, now that we've done this part, the very last part to the note is where I'm going to now calculate my depreciation. Right, now often students don't like this part because, again, there's a lot of calculation here. But remember, guys, try to break this down. Try to break it down into steps. And I know you're probably thinking, but, but we don't have that much of time. But remember, guys, the more you practice, the faster you become. You find new ways in which to do a calculation much quicker. You become more faster. So I want you guys to please bear that in mind. Right, so my depreciation calculation. Let's go to our information. Right, how am I going to go about calculating depreciation? So remember, your depreciation will include the following. Okay, so we've already calculated, okay, you're going to obviously have your depreciation on disposal for the current financial year, which we've already calculated. I'm just going to rewrite this amount as 1,154. Okay, so we've already done that. Then remember, we've got a new vehicle that we purchase, so we've got to obviously provide depreciation for the new vehicle as well, as well as for my old vehicles. So the old vehicles that I previously owned, not the disposal, not the new vehicle, I've got to write off depreciation on those vehicles as well. Right, so try to show these calculations separately. So in the event of you getting, if it happens, if you get the total incorrect, you can at least get part marks for showing the individual calculations. Okay, so let's start off with new. New, remember, we purchased this asset on, let's just go back there, can't remember now, 
We purchased this asset on the 29th of Feb 2004. Financial year ends on the 30th of June 2004. So this asset, technically, we own the asset for the month of March, April, May, and June. So I've owned the asset for four months. Okay, the cost of the asset we've already worked out. It was ninety thousand. So when I depreciate this asset. Okay, the new asset, so 90,000 is my cost. It's new, so there's obviously no accumulated depreciation to subtract. I'm going to use the rate that was given to me, which is 10%, and I'm depreciating the asset. I just want to check one more time. I bought the asset on the 29th of Feb, so I'm depreciating it for March, April, May, and June, 4 over 12. So the total depreciation that I'm writing off will be an amount of okay, 90,000 okay, times 10% times 4 divided by 12. So I'm writing off 3,000. Okay. Right, so the calculation of new completed. Right, old. Now guys, probably going to take a bit of time to do this calculation. I'm just going to maybe quickly write it down for you because I may not have time. Always happens. The, the most important calculation, so for some reason, is always left until the end. Now, when I'm calculating my old depreciation or depreciation on the old vehicle, I've got to first calculate what is the cost of the old vehicle. Okay, so how am I going to go about calculating this? I'm going to take the cost at the beginning of the year minus the cost for my disposal. Okay, you guys with me? So cost at the beginning of the year was 160000 and the disposal was 60000 So that will give me the cost for my old vehicle. Okay, right. Once I've got the cost, I also need... What was my accumulated depreciation on my old vehicle? So in order to calculate accumulated depreciation, I'm going to do the exact same calculations. I'm going to take the cost, not cost, sorry, the balance at the beginning of the year minus what I transferred to asset disposal. Okay, you guys with me? So minus what I transferred to asset disposal. Right. Now, remember, this would obviously include what you've updated as well. Okay, so let's just write this properly for you. So you would then add what you've updated and then minus what you've transferred to asset disposal. Okay, can't do the calculation for you guys, so you're going to have to just do this one on your own. That will give you accumulated depreciation at the end or on, on your old vehicle. Cost minus accumulated depreciation, which you would calculate, would then give you your carrying value. You then multiply this by 10%, and that would give you your depreciation on the old vehicle. Okay? If we then add up our depreciation, disposal plus new plus old, that gives us the total depreciation for the year, which is normally worth anywhere between 9 to 12 marks, and that's what you would then record in your tangible asset note. Okay, right, I'm afraid that's all we have time for, so I think we covered quite a bit in this section, um, and unfortunately it is time to say goodbye, so from me, Mahesh Lal, it's good luck guys, God bless.